Okay, so we've covered the Chicago School and their idea that subcultures are a function. There's a function that they do, okay? And we've covered what they are. Now, over in the UK, the story is very different. The story over the UK is they're cleaning up after the war. Um, they've always been a class society, so inequality in the UK is along class grounds, not um, ethnicity. And while the while directly after the war, there was a, a period of what they call austerity, which is what Greece is under in the moment, where the government tightens the budget so much that the people suffer. Mm -hmm. After that period of austerity, the rebuild began. And when rebuilds happen, young people are often wanted to help in those programs. So, and that, that's even here, the same in New Zealand with Christchurch and the Christchurch rebuild, that there's a, quite a lot of um, pressure on institutions like our own to up the amount of students doing trade so that we've got them down in Christchurch building houses or up here building houses. Okay? So there's that stuff going on and there's a double and, and, and there's a school that's looking at this all the time. And that school's called Birmingham School. So you've got two schools. The Chicago School, which is associated with function, and the Birmingham School, which is associated with conflict. Now I'm not going to go too far into the history of the Birmingham School because that's another fucker papa that we go down to. But Birmingham School was where art and stuff about um, hegemony, um, cultural capital, that sits in the Birmingham style thinking, where society is seen to have inequality. Okay? That's key to the Birmingham. Chicago School, you even saw in that video, though Malcolm Klein is a renowned Chicago school sociologist and he didn't use the word inequality at all. The picture he told was one of inequality happening but he didn't say here's all this inequality. No, Birmingham is really interested in inequality and it's also really interested in the media. It has a, a double-edged side, it's used to how people use the media but it's also interested how the media uses people. Okay. And it says to Chicago, you are right, there are subcultures, and those subcultures can be seen by their fashion, by their particular way of, of, of speaking or living, and by their... Um, anti-social or pro-something voice. You are right on those elements. But you are perhaps a little wrong. You're wrong on one element, that there always has to be crime. That some of the subcultures that came out in the UK were if the system subcultures and not necessarily criminal. And an example of that that the Birmingham School picks up on are the punk culture. Punks aren't middle class young people. Punks are working class young people who can barely afford clothes. And, they, and when you learn about, and you might choose to tomorrow, learn a little bit about punk history. Basically, when, it, when these kids, they couldn't afford anything but rip clothes. Yeah. And then one guy goes over to the United States, the punk cultural movement there, Malcolm McLaren, brings it back and sells it, and the middle classes get into punk. But punk is very, punk itself, the, the aspirations of punk are very if the system. God save the Queen, I don't know if you've heard that song, God save the King, Queen by the, the, um, was it, uh, the, the, oh, was it the, not the remote, oh, Sex Pistols. I might have to play you God save the Queen by the Sex Pistols. But they are, um, some of the some of the most important music from the punk scene, and the punk scene was in the US as well, but in the UK punk scene, some of the most important music came from bands like The Clash mm. and songs like London Calling. Mm. So if you wanted to get a sense of where punk was going, I would say look up London Calling. 
and we might have time to watch that before we storm off for lunch. Because the storm won't be coming back. I used a good pun there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because London calling, you hear the cry. Okay, and what the Birmingham School would say is that there, in every subculture there is a language of resistance. There's a language of resistance. And that language is expressed in fashion, activity, and um, media. So whatever it be, some culture uses as its media, which is all up here. Active resistance, drugs, deviance, writing in various forms. So, and these, the, this, this is a whole stereotype. Um, this is a, this PowerPoint is all up on Moodle, or will be all up on Moodle, which has all the other stuff. Burning in school, and I'll leave you on this. I said that there were there are two aspects to subcultures. Subcultures, and this is where the problem with the word subculture is. So if I look, put the word subculture at the top. What are the two words in it? Sub and culture. Sub and culture. What does sub mean? A part. Secondary. Five. Secondary and part. What do we mean by subway? Those are right, but sub actually means sub. Under. Underneath. Under. Underneath. Class. Oh. Subcultures are under. They come from the lower cultures of the main culture. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> there's a catch in this, and so there's some, some people that are really resistant to it. Now, I actually think there's quite, there's quite a lot of power in grabbing hold of it, because then you can still use it as an if the man thing, because the, <laughs> the different problems with it. That you would have heard in the 90s, people talked about tribes of young people. That was the new word to try and get rid of subculture. Burning in school said there were two types of culture, three types of culture. There was culture subculture, and then another culture it called counter culture. <laughs> All right. where, do you, where do you think counter sits? The opposite. The opposite. Yeah. So it's <laughs> at the same side, isn't it? It's not under, it's the, it's the opposite. And the counter culture on your piece of paper is the hippie movement. The hippies were seen as counter cultural, not subcultural. Um, in New Zealand, rave is seen as counter cultural, not subcultural. Um, the key difference is that those cultures tend to draw people from the mainstream culture into them. So it's the middle class people challenging the system. Way back when Burningham School was writing, and you had to have a writing from the Burningham School, a couple of them actually, you will notice that they talked about subcultures as if the young kids would grow out of it and just find themselves a working class job. Countercultural kids will change the world. I actually have gone where the reverse is actually showing itself to be true. Countercultures like hippies died. There's not many, there's not many hippies from the 1970s who are still hippies today. But there are still metalheads from the 1980s that are metalheads today. There are still punks from the 1970s who are 100% punk today. And so this is the real power if you take the idea that they may be only concerned with function and they may be only concerned with the conflict and inequality that's going on between the different cultural groupings in society and how subcultures express resistance. And I'm like, wow, we, when we're working with young people, how can we capture that voice of resistance and encourage young people to actually read the inequality and write into that, into their songs and into their stories? I think there's real power in that. That's why my husband and I have always had a dream that what we wanted to start was like a big music studio up for youth where they could come in with whatever music side they wanted to sit in on the spectrum. And if they wanted to do punk, they could do punk. If they wanted to do hip hop, they could do hip hop. If they wanted to do the both together, they could do both mm -hmm. together. You know, because the, but the, our, our role would be to facilitate them to not see that the rebellion side of gang say picking on hip hop, the rebellion side of gangster hip hop is the answer. Mm -hmm. No, the innovative side of Pacifica and indigenous hip hop is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Because that side is beginning to really challenge the means as well mm -hmm. without quite fitting into being a complete 
you've got to go all gangster and get yourself a gun and walk down the hood and mm. do another one. You know, it's it's got a lot more power to it. So what I'm going to do is, is show you a couple of, um, or go jump onto YouTube and I'll show you a couple of songs that really show some of the, 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 the power of subculture or from a burning them perspective as a voice of resistance, from a burning them perspective. 